on Good Morning El Paso, two big health concerns for residents in the borderland from water contamination in Anthony to another alert in Tornillo also. It's a very intriguing uh, development and that raises the very serious question about the other pilot. What was he doing? Was he committing suicide? New developments in the deadly German wings plane crash. Why was the pilot locked outside of the cockpit? And severe storms turned deadly in Oklahoma. We have your complete storm track weather coverage. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. This is what people in Arkansas are waking up to this morning. Damage left behind as tornado season returned with a vengeance. Tornadoes also touched down in Oklahoma, wiping out homes and ripping off roofs. We'll continue our coverage on this coming up in just a bit. But first, we want to talk about our winds not too damaging, just a little light out there. This is a live look outside this Thursday morning. And you can see that everything looks nice, of course, from a distance, but we are expecting things to pick up out there as the day progresses. Good morning, El Paso, Las Cruces, and Juarez. I'm Stephanie Valle. And I'm Hillary Florin. Good morning, everyone. Let's get straight to meteorologist Crystal Cly and talk about our wind out there this morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning, guys. Yeah, you know, the forecast called for windy conditions through the morning, and that's exactly what we're seeing. A cool front passed early this morning. That's bringing up those wind gusts through the morning hours. Notice we're reporting 24 miles mile per hour winds at the Greater El Paso landfill near Clint. 11 miles per hour at the Tech H2O Center with a temperature of 46 degrees there. Here at the KVIA studios, winds are reporting calm, but sometimes we have issues with our weather net sites, and I believe this is not reporting accurately. Just a bit ago, winds were reporting between that 10 to 20 mile per hour range, and that does seem a little more accurate. Now, those winds are going to dip as we move into the afternoon. We're just talking breezy later today, so the forecast will be getting better, but temperatures will be remaining cooler than they have been thanks to that cold front. I'll explain coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Crystal, thank you. We want to remind you that TxDOT is asking you to pay attention and slow down because a lot of changes are coming up. For the next four years or so, the city's freeways are going to be a mess. We're looking at scheduled projects on the east and west sides of town, plus construction on a lot of other major roads. Just last summer, two TxDOT workers were hit and killed by an alleged drunk driver at the construction site of Spur 1966 near UTEP. So just be aware and slow down when entering a construction zone. And now speaking of construction zones, all lanes of I-10 West at Yarbrough were closed overnight. They're scheduled to open at 6 a.m. And as you can see, that's already happened. It happened earlier this morning. So no problems this morning if you're heading out on the east side. We have a warning for those of you living in Tornillo. Residents are being told to boil their water before drinking or cooking with it. Francelia Vega with the Tornillo Water District tells us a water sample tested positive for an unspecified bacteria. More tests are being conducted and those results are expected by tomorrow. You're asked to boil any water used for consumption until further notice. Of course, we will update you as soon as we learn any new information. Contaminated water in Anthony, New Mexico is also causing concern this morning. This after testing shows the groundwater around dairies has higher levels of nitrates and solid waste. The plan discussed at a hearing yesterday is to cut off the source of the pollution and let the contaminants dissipate over time. The dairy owners say they're happy to move forward and have already put some measures in place. But residents want more done now. We could know in about two months what the state plans to do about the contamination problem. Another public hearing scheduled for this morning at 8.30 a.m. at the Anthony, New Mexico City Hall. And now to the latest on that German plane that crashed in the Alps. There are reports that one of the pilots of the plane was actually locked out of the cockpit, desperately trying to get back in. Rescue teams are on the ground this morning searching for more clues. ABC's Molly Hunter is there and has the very latest. This morning, the hundreds of rescue workers and investigators are again being ferried to the crash scene, some dropping in from helicopters. Overnight, the New York Times reporting that dramatic revelation from the cockpit voice recorder. Authorities saying they heard voices, one of the two pilots leaving the cockpit, unable to get in during that deadly eight-minute descent before the plane smashed into the mountain. The Times quotes an investigator saying you can hear he is trying to smash down the door, but there's no response from the pilot inside the cockpit. The two main possibilities, if this is true, 
One, was there a medical condition of the pilot who was actually in the cockpit? Did he have an emergency and start the descent and then have this medical condition? The other possibility is pilot suicide. Could he have locked out the other pilot and decided that he wanted to take his own life and that of the passengers? In the U.S., pilots are not left alone in the cockpit. If one leaves, a flight attendant takes that spot. This new information adding to the mystery as the families mourn the 150 people on board, including three Americans. Virginians Yvonne Selke and her daughter Emily traveling together. Emily, a recent college graduate. Their family calling them, quote, two wonderful, caring people who meant so much to so many. And the German town of Haltern, gripped by pain, anguish, tears, and flowers for those 16 high schoolers and two teachers lost in the crash. Today, families from Haltern will be here in France to see the recovery efforts firsthand. Today, recovery workers will have to carve a new path up at that mountain crash site. And while crash investigators say the on-site investigation will only take a week, it could be many more weeks until we have a complete picture of what brought that plane down. Molly Hunter, ABC News, saint les Alpes, France. A heads up, El Paso water utility customers, your water bill will have an extra charge come next month. The Public Service Board voted yesterday to pass a franchise fee to all customers, not just businesses. That means starting in April, residential customers will see an increase of $1.94 on their bill. That's about $23 more a year. At first, the PSB charged only non-residential customers to pay for the fee, but the utility officials say they now believe that's unfair. The PSB will reevaluate how it charges non-residential users depending on their water meter costs. Businesses who that have been paying the fee since September will also get a refund for the amount they paid. And other people expecting to see an increase on their bills, students at El Paso Community College. The Board of Trustees voted to increase tuition for the 2015 fall semester. This is the second increase just this year after the school increased rates for the spring semester. So here's how it will break down for the fall. Resident students will pay $5 more per credit hour and non-resident students will pay $7 more. EPCC's Associate Vice President for Financial Services tells ABC7 Despite increasing enrollment, the state has not been funding EPCC. He says the lack of that state funding could result in a $4 million shortfall. The state mandated tests for schools all across Texas is almost here. And some schools in the borderland are doing a little something extra to get those students ready. Good, Good morning, El Paso's Luke Lidden is live with more. Luke. Hillary Stephanie, the STAR test began on March 30th, and it stands for State of Texas Assessments of Academic Readiness. But three SISD schools are boosting the children's confidence before the test by hosting pep rallies. Robert R. Rojas Elementary, Myrtle Cooper Elementary, and Socorro Middle School are all encouraging students to have fun with the upcoming test. Even Chico the Chihuahua will be at one of the pep rallies. Students will play various games, and even prizes will be given out to teachers and students with the most school spirit. Some tips for students to do well on the test include getting plenty of sleep, sleep rather the night before, eat a healthy breakfast the morning of the test, and parents should talk with their children about what they should expect for the test and how it really isn't that different from other tests. And of course, celebrate once the testing is finished and again when you receive your scores. Those pep rallies begin this morning at 8 and 9 a.m. And the STAR test begin March 30th and last until April 1st. Back to you. All right. Thanks so much, Luke. From kindergarten all the way to high school, special students in the Socorro District got to show what they're made of in the 8th annual James Butler Games. We have a recap. Also, a late start to the tornado season ended very violently in Oklahoma overnight. We have your storm track weather coverage. And what can we expect back here in the borderland? Meteorologist Crystal Klein has your detailed forecast. We're going to be tracking those wind speeds through this morning coming up right after your break. Thanks, Crystal. This is ABC7, where news comes first.